A new COVID-19 variant known as NB.1.8.1, or Nimbus, is getting global attention due to its high transmissibility and severe throat symptoms. Should South Africa be worried? Well, we're joined by Professor Shabir Madi, Professor of Vaccinology at Wits Medical School, to separate fact from fear and explain what we need to know. Professor Madi, appreciate your time. How's your Saturday afternoon? Hi, great. Thanks for having me, Hugo. And all much the better, seeing that protests are about to win their first World Cup. I guess uh, we're moments away from what would be an exciting uh, Saturday afternoon for us all. But let's go to this issue around this new COVID strain. Now, what distinguishes the Nimbus variant from earlier COVID strains? So you got uh, what they've identified to this uh, newest variant is that it's got multiple addition mutations, which equips the virus to be much more successful in, in, on, in adhering to human cells uh, and also to being more transmissible. So it's something that we've seen with uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, that it continues evolving over time. Uh, previously, the Omicron, the parent Omicron version uh, variant was the most uh, infectious that we had seen. And what we're seeing now is further iterations of the parent Omicron uh, variant that was first identified in South Africa. So it is more transmissible than previous variants, uh, but at the same time, it is coming, is evolving at a time where there's extensive immunity against COVID-19. Uh, the major concern uh, is that in a country such as South Africa, we haven't seen an uptick of uh, infections due to this variant. Uh, but the concern is that, especially for high-risk individuals, there aren't any vaccines available in the country or licensed in the country uh, which those at the uh, at high risk uh, that are wanting to protect themselves would be able to access. Now, what we're obviously picking up is that, uh, as opposed to some of the earlier variants that spread uh, rapidly, they seems to be somewhat contained. How much of this is a result of individuals having vaccinated against COVID uh, those months ago? Yeah, so uh, in South Africa, no one has probably received any COVID-19 vaccine for the past two years uh, mm. because vaccines simply haven't been available. Uh, but at the same time, there's extensive immunity both from previous vaccination, but also from past infection. Uh, and that past, that type of immunity that has built up over time, be it from infection or vaccines, equips the individual to sort of get rid of shedding of the virus much sooner. So we don't see the sort of surges which we experience uh, during the peak of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, where immunity at the population level was much less. So when more transmissible virus started to evolve, they spread uh, like wildfire. So we're in a very different space now with extensive uh, population level immunity. Now, one of the symptoms of this has been something called the, the razor throat. Just walk us through the, the implications of this or how it manifests. Yeah, look, I don't think the symptoms are too different from infections from influenza, as an example. In fact, right now in South Africa, the virus that is dominating uh, is the influenza uh, virus. Uh, just a few weeks ago, it was another virus known as respiratory sensitive virus. In adults, certainly, uh, the type of symptoms that one would experience with COVID-19 is probably very similar uh, to influenza. Even if you were to get a severe influenza infection, you would have a very scratchy, sore throat, uh, your nose would be congested. So there isn't much which discriminates as to what symptoms uh, are being caused by the different viruses. There's a fair amount of overlap. So I don't think by symptoms itself, you can distinguish that the person has been infected by one virus as opposed to another. Professor Marty, you've, you've talked about there being no available uh, vax, COVID-19 vaccine, vaccination drugs uh, in South Africa in the last few months. So how do we protect ourselves from potential uh, COVID infection? Look, I think the important thing is for people to be responsible. Uh, if they are manifesting symptoms of uh, upper respiratory illness, meaning that they're coughing, they've got a runny nose, they certainly should avoid coming into close contact with individuals that are above the age of 65, 70, individuals that have got underlying uh, heart problems or lung problems. Uh, and those individuals that do have those underlying medical conditions, they would be well advised that should they go out into close spaces, uh, possibly to wear a mask, uh, just to prevent uh, them from becoming infected in a close environment. 
But I wouldn't say there isn't there's anything else exceptional that someone needs to do right now. Certainly people are encouraged to take, get their influenza vaccine, and certainly the same high-risk individuals are encouraged to get influenza vaccine, which is available. But other than that, it's just taking the necessary precautions and avoiding being in close contact or in the same room as another person that is coughing, sneezing, has a runny nose. Okay, so, so that speaks to one half of the equation, which is what uh, every South African needs to, to be doing. But what role does limited testing and sequencing play in, in preparedness? Uh, very little. Uh, so there's still surveillance ongoing in South Africa. We're able to keep a track in terms of which uh, viruses are circulating and where the new variants are evolving. And that is ongoing work across the country. Uh, and again, there isn't much of concern there. Uh, but I wouldn't encourage people to rush out to be tested to see whether it's uh, COVID-19 or whether it's influenza, because at the end of the day, uh, there's very limited options in terms of treatment. For COVID-19, uh, there is an antiviral drug known as Paxilovic, uh, which is exorbitantly expensive, close mm. to 15,000 rand for a single course over five days. And even then, it's difficult to come by. So I don't think there's much options, unfortunately, uh, but again, just for people to take the necessary precautions, avoid others that are manifesting symptoms of a upper respiratory illness. And hopefully sometime soon, one of these companies actually gets a COVID-19 vaccine license. So at least those individuals that are at high risk that require probably annual boosting doses of vaccine are able to access those vaccines. Now, now I'm curious to know why COVID-19 vaccines are, are not available. Uh, is this because the manufacturing has stopped? Is, has there been a policy not to acquire any more COVID-19 vaccines? No, so manufacturing certainly hasn't stopped. Uh, the vaccine is uh, widely available in the Northern Hemisphere, in the United States, in many European countries. Uh, it seems that the reason why the companies have decided not to pursue licensure in South Africa, uh, which is sort of a really laborious process, it can take anything between 12 and 18 months, uh, is that there's a very limited demand of the vaccine. So it, companies don't think it's in their interest in terms of the effort they need to put in. But unfortunately, I think that is irresponsible on the part of companies. You can't determine uh, whether you're going to get a vaccine license in the country purely based on uh, there not being what, satisfies their requirements of adequate demand. Uh, certainly these vaccines were tested out in South Africa, and I think that's a responsibility on the part of companies to ensure that there's access to those vaccines, uh, even now that a pandemic has passed. So what precautions should people take if they're traveling to some of these countries that have been talked about as uh, potentially having strains, various strains of this new COVID variant? Yeah, it's mainly the NB181 uh, strain, uh, which seems to be of concern right now. Uh, and the vaccine that's available, in fact, is a vaccine that's against another variant known as a JM variant. But it does confer cross-protection uh, from severe diseases, at least, uh, against this newer variant. Uh, again, the precautions someone needs to take, uh, if you are traveling to those countries where this variant seems to be dominating, including in the U.S., uh, as an example. It's, again, to do exactly what you have done in South Africa. Avoid closed spaces, wear a mask if in a very poorly ventilated environment, and avoid people that are coughing. Uh, you might be lucky you'd be able to get a vaccine in those countries, and those vaccines are available. Uh, but again, those vaccines are probably only required uh, by individuals that are at high risk of developing severe COVID. Professor Shabir Mari, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for speaking to us. And we'll let you go and watch South Africa score that one run that is required to take this uh, test World Cup. And that's where we leave that conversation.